Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome, welcome to the Wild at Heart Show, real, authentic, uncut. This is the show for men, by men, about men here at USA Global TV and Radio. And I welcome you. My name is Roland. I'm the creator and, and, and host and moderator of the show. And the reason for that is uh, besides my main business, I do coaching consulting for huge international companies. I dedicate my life uh, besides uh, healthy lifestyle the environment itself uh to men's work because I'm, I'm as you can see i'm a man myself and i found out a year some years ago that i have really worked on my on my, my I like being a man what does it mean to be a man and, and i learned about that i have to yeah i have to find other men's and, and share um my, my inner world because most men don't talk about their emotion inside and stuff like that so i started uh, uh sparing for men and we do we meet uh, bi-weekly and we discuss different topics that are important to us and I, I actually a year ago uh, we started here at USA Global TV and Radio uh, this amazing show and I've, I'm very thankful for that for this, uh, that the platform gives us the opportunity that we can share as a man uh, really in, in, in a safe environment and I'm so happy that all the panelists and all the other shows really opened up and, and spoke very openly and honest and authentic about different topics and by the way, when you missed one of the other shows, uh, please go to our website. It's bonfiredogs.com. On bonfiredogs.com, you will find all the recordings of all the other episodes. If you missed one, and we also, uh, you also uh, welcome you, and you have appreciated to share it to your friends. Thank you so much. So the topic for today is how passionate can man can a man be? So it's about passion, emotion, passion. How passionate can a man be? And I'm very happy that uh, panelists come together again today. And let's get started with our first man from the UK, my dear friend, Big Scott is in the house. How do you? Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> hey, Big Scott, great to have you back. Probably the most passion there is on this TV screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> very, good. very good. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good, good. Just waiting for the next phase, but literally just been busy sorting my nest. All the chores, you know, them little things that are in your head and niggling you. I wrote a full on list and literally I'm 90% of the way through it. And then as I tick one thing off, I put another three things on, as you know. But uh, yeah, keeping busy, keeping active, keeping positive and being passionate in everything I do. Absolutely, we cannot talk about that. Yeah, same, same to me here. Same to me. I'm, you know, I'm traveling in my motorhome, and I, I always have to say, should I travel to go to the next spot or should I work? Or should I, this is, so, yeah, I'm also very passionate about this. Okay, let's welcome our next panelist from Texas. Howdy, howdy, our dear friend Red. Yo, howdy, yo. yo, 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 yo. How are you doing, Red? Exceptionally well, as always. Very, very good, very good. You're a role model for me, man. You're a role model for me. Always good, always in a good shape, always happy, always active. Well, some, some days I'm actually better. Sorry? You know, I, I stay at a pretty high level, but some days I'm actually much better than I am. I mean, here in about an hour after the show's over, I'm going to have my ebook published. That's going to make me feel exceptionally well. And maybe 24 hours later, I'll have my uh, paperback done. So, I got a, an event coming up here in less than two weeks that I would like to have a bunch of books to take to it. And if I can, great. If not, well, you know, I did my best and um, didn't work out that time. But regardless, it's it's still great. And, um, and it's just part of being part of Texas. You know, everything's bigger and better here. 
Absolutely. Red, you're a really machine, you know, and it, it, you inspire me so much to go back to, to actually finish my first book finally. <laughs> but there's so much stuff here in the world. But you're an excellent machine and you're really a role model. Thanks for being back on the show. And gentlemen, today we have a guest on our show from Canada. Let's welcome Doug from Canada. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, Doug. Hi, How's Doug. Great to going? see you. How is it going in Canada? It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> End of discussion. It's cold. It's winter time, isn't it? Yeah, this house it looks is. nice and warm, though, so we're okay. Yeah, it <laughs> is winter time, but it doesn't have to be this nasty about it. It can kind of gradually <laughs> let it lead into it or yeah. lead out of it. Play, yeah, a bit of foreplay first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're not passionate about a nasty winter time. <laughs> no, no, that's yeah. not even we're gonna on get up to about 30 degrees here, and We're going to get up to about 30 degrees today here in Houston. You had to bring that up, didn't you? Yeah. Well, it's, it is what it is. I mean, another couple of days, we'll be down. You know, it cycles this time of year. It's just what it is. It is. Uh, yeah, I think we've got cold, cold weather coming our way, but I think it's coming from Canada. So, Doug, can you just take it back and stop sharing it with everybody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, no, can you be, I know it's can paying you be it forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you what be passionate that, in right? cold weather? Sometimes you have to be a little bit more passionate in cold, cold weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get creative, right? You have to be creative in order to get the passion. So, and in cold weather, even more so. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, a friend of mine, you know, he, he sent me uh, some photographs from yesterday uh, from my from my former home base, which I left last year after 14 years on a beautiful island of New York. And she can imagine a beautiful, nice, warm spot, even in winter, it's winter. And you have 10 centimeters of snow over there and people are skiing on the street. It's it's a nightmare on the island because people are not prepared. They don't have winter tires. <laughs> Everything is stuck. So please, Doug. Take the snow back. Take the snow, take the snow back. Anyway, gentlemen, here we are. Uh, yeah, the, the topic is how passionate can a man be? Who is passionate about what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do. Yeah. How do you? How do you? <laughs> I'm passionate about everything. About I everything? Think, yeah, I think life, life. You know, if you you wake up and breathe, then you should be passionate. You know, after as you guys know, Doug probably doesn't know. But um, after spending a month in hospital, you realize what's really important to you and what is your passion, um, you know? And I learned that my passion is is listening to new music and talking to people and introducing, and you know, that's no longer a passion. It's, become a, it's becoming a business, you know? What was a hobby for me, just uniting people is now, I realized when I was in my hospital bed, it's no longer Big Scott Radio. You know, you and I radio is, it belongs to the world. And, you know, I thought about it while I was there. I was like, well, who do I pass it on to? If, if, I, if I pass away, who, who's going to carry on the mantle? You know, so it's no longer Big Scott anymore. And I'm learning this year that I need a lot more passion because now I'm having to learn to delegate and let other people take control of something that I've spent, like in on Friday, I launched my radio station softly to the public eight years ago. So it's her eighth birthday, but no, but I've never done any marketing or any advertising. Every, all the listeners I get is through word of mouth, either from the festivals that I do or the artists that I have on my stage. And I've been listening, I was looking at the stats the other day and I've been listened to at least once in 180 countries since I started, you know, so my world domination from my back room is, is well underway. Do you know what I mean? So what was a hobby is now a passion and i probably got more passion now than i had before i went into hospital if that makes sense do you know what i mean so i'm excited every day i get up i've got stuff to do and it's not there going oh my god it's a chore i got a list of this to do i got a list of that to do i'm like right what can i knock off do you know what i mean and every time you, even if it's a little thing just knock it off give yourself a little bit of praise you know every day i look at the list and i'm like oh my god i'm sure i've not put taken anything off but if you love what you're doing, fill it with every second. And that's what at the moment, as I say, my passion is, is my music and building my radio station to give to the world. So, uh, yes, I'm a passionate man, but I'm knowing where to put that passion right now. Well, I guess that's part of the problem that Roland brought up and can man be passionate? Well, obviously, yes, we all can because we all have yeah, individual yeah. things we love. But mm -hmm. what happens when something shuts down that passion for whatever reason or yeah. you 
accidentally or on, on purpose find a new passion. I mean, those things happen all the time. Mm -hmm. um, for, for whatever reason, what you may have been passionate about 20 years ago doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, technology, all sorts of things happen. Uh, we, we go to different places. We learn new things. We need new people. Uh, our options to, uh, to, to learn new things and, and love new things become uh, growing every day. Mm -hmm. but, but gentlemen, is this really the maturity? Uh, because, you know, I, I travel a lot and I meet so many people, especially when I walk through cities and, uh, with a head like this. And, and uh, I don't, I, I'm, but I'm a passionate person too. And, and I, I always love to, to connect with patient people because you learn a lot from them. You can share a lot of stuff, but it's, it, but it's not, the, it's not an average uh, person because most people are just in the threat mill. I mean, we all more or less in the threat mill, but most people have excuses. They don't see the, the light of the end of the tunnel. They don't have the, they lost their passion for, for any reason, whatever, whatever can happen. But I, I believe pa to be passionate is so important. When I, when I think about myself, I, I, when I woke up in the morning, I said, wow, I'm really, I'm so happy. First of all, I'm still alive. I mean, exactly. I come up to age. <laughs> it's not normal. Most of my friends, actually, most of my friends already passed away from different heart attacks and stuff like that. So I'm happy that I'm alive. I'm happy that I'm, that I feel my body, but I don't feel any pain when I wake up in the morning. And I said, wow, I'm on the road again. And what what's up? Uh, unfortunately, the day only has 24 hours for me. So mm -hmm. I fill it with every second. Oh, cool. fill every second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Scott, but, uh, before I, we I think, come, come to the... I think there's some extra parts of that thing that we're not looking at because let's say I'm really passionate about a, a particular football or soccer team that mm -hmm. is not my, my favorite, but somebody else's, and they're constantly talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, obviously there's a passion there, but they're sharing with me that I don't care about. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I have to you know, be kind and gentle and things like that. But then you also have other situations where maybe it's some kind of uh, political or religious or some other issue out there in the universe that really, why would somebody even have a, an interest in that? And so, you know, there's just all sorts of things out there that people are passionate about, but I'm not passionate about it. You don't uh, have to but, be. No, you know, as long as you don't inundate me, yeah. with, it's fine. Yeah, I think you're confusing that. You Tell know, me what it is. Don't inundate me with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, we all have a passion. It's like, don't practice, don't preach. I'm quite happy for you to tell me about your your life, your experience, your journey. But like, I, I've got a friend who I helped out who was an alcoholic and he's just become a Christian and literally he's like, Scotty, let's meet up and have a chat and, you know, talk about God. I'm like, mate, I've helped you on your way. If he's helping you, that's perfectly fine. But it's not my cup of tea. You know, I quite happily talk about it. But some people, they don't talk about it. As they say, they just push their agenda on you that's not passion that, that that's dictatorship mm -hmm. i think you know but they I, they're allowed to have that yeah. passion but there's a there's a difference between having a passion and then being forceful to make somebody else appreciate what you find passionate you know if that makes yeah. any sense yeah and when it's your same cup of tea then both you're you're, yeah. you're aligned and you're you're having a good time but when mm -hmm. it's not your cup of tea you know you, there can be issues yeah, that can be the way you handle that issue. Exactly, exactly. But you just say, listen, I totally understand what you bless you. I totally understand that you're into it. Unfortunately, I, I'm not. Can we move on to something else? And if they've just got that on the agenda, it takes two to play the game. Just turn around and walk away and talk to somebody else. You know, don't 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 entertain energy vampires. Yeah, and, and I know, I know for 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 me, the the big thing is. My passion comes from knowing that when I get up in the morning and start my day, that I'm going to be able to help, hopefully help somebody in in their journey. And that's really important. And I think, you know, laying on in a hospital bed for a long period of time gave you lots of opportunity for reflection and, and thinking. And so, you know, now you're in a place and I like the, the part that you talked about you know, your friend with who had a, was drinking or had a drinking issue um, and, and, you know, how you position that to me, that's all part of your, what drives you as a person. Your oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I, I, I had an industry that my mother always said to me as a child, never a sheep, always a shepherd. Yeah. You know, and I've had I battled cancer in 2021. I was just getting better. 
I was back in hospital for another month, you know, when I've got another battle coming. And I was there and I had a guy next to me who was literally, woe is me, woe is me, rah, 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 rah. There was another, per- you know, they all had different perspectives and their ailments were different, but people were putting more emphasis on smaller ailments and just listening to people. But by the time I left that ward, the grumpy old kid next to me was giving me a hug and saying thank you for grassing on him to the nurses because he's a diabetic and they were going to operate until him until his sugar levels were low. And he'd come back and say, oh, I've just had a cappuccino with eight sugars in and five donuts and half a bar of chocolate. And then wondering why his bloody his sugar's peaking. So I grassed him into the, the nurses and then he was like, do you know what, mate? I, I was going to rip your head off. And I was like, but can I just say thank you? I've given all of my sweets away. I've given all of my sugar away. I'm going to listen to the nurses. Do you know what I mean? So it's how you deal with that situation. And some people need the lead in hand, whereas I don't. I, 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 I can see it. Even in the hospital, the nurses are like, how are you so positive? I was like, well, what other option have I got? Be a miserable twat, you know? Yeah. Laying in my bed for three weeks, there was shit that I wanted to do when I was still alive, barely. But I was like, look, I'm still alive. I'm going to get a chance to do these things. And literally, like, my daughter and my ex-partner were like, are you on? Are you an ever-ready battery? Because I'm just not stopping. I'm just getting shit done because I know there's another challenge on the horizon. And I don't want to be laying there going, oh, do you know what? I wish I'd painted the wall before I went in or uh, sorted the shed out or do that. Every little niggle will be done by the time I go into hospital. So when I come out and do my R&R, if I want to do music, I can go into the front room, it's the music room. If I want to watch a movie and play the games, I've got my bedroom sorted. If I want to come in the studio and talk to you guys, it's all ready. If I want to go into my shed and do a little bit of woodwork or carpentry or sit in my garden, it's all going to be ready. I'm not going to sit there going, you know, why didn't I move that planter? You know, because we clutter our own minds. So, well, uh, and what's that you remind me of? A... Sorry, Ray. I was just going to say Go what's ahead. interesting is you've just described your passion. Yeah. Yeah. And it's multifaceted. Yeah, reminded you know? me, yeah. Scott reminded me of a, a story I'd seen, I'd read actually several years ago, where these two people were in the hospital sharing a room. One had some eye surgery and they had bandages over the eyes and mm-hmm. wouldn't be able to do anything for a while. And so he, they got talking and uh, he said, well, tell me what's going on. Or he says, well, he said, we got a big window here. And he's describing everything that's going on and during, during the day. Anyway, long story short, for the week, they talked about this window and everything going on outside. And when the guy finally had the bandages taken off, the other guy was out of the room. And they found out there was no window. It was just a plain room. Uh, but the, the guy was able to visualize and make the other guy feel much more comfortable because he couldn't see anything that was going on. I, I no, that was- that no. On that note, the, the ward that I was on, my bed was right next to the window and we were on the fifth floor. So, every, And they used to say, do you want the curtains shut? I was like, no. I left them open so I'd see different sunsets, sunrises, and laying there, not being able to do anything but to see it and to see how the world just carries on regardless, you know. And I saw some beautiful sunsets when I couldn't sleep, you know, and some sunrises when I couldn't sleep. And instead of going, oh, I can't sleep, I can't sleep, I looked at what was around me or I put somebody would recommend I'd been watch binge watch a series from like three o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock before people have had breakfast, you know? <laughs> so it's just how you fill your time. I could just be laying there going, Oh, you know, and some of them were, and it's just like, come on, just get a little bit of umph, have a bit of passion about something, you know, be passionate about something, you know, and my music, wherever I go, I'm literally, three degrees away from somebody that's either musically talent or has somebody in their family that's musically talented or has something to do with the creative industry and i think that's what my journey is wherever i am i don't care where you put me these people will gravitate towards me and music has kept me going you know mm-hmm. i loved it i loved it i guess it's so important that we really uh, are driven purpose driven or, or passion driven because I know but you got to find really... out what your purpose is that's that's yeah. what our journey is what is our purpose and then put all your belief into that purpose absolutely absolutely because you know about what you said before or read also and, and you were also covered when somebody's pa- passionate about a soccer team or whatever or a team i i, I never been passionate about it. I was watching on TV or, or sometimes live in a stadium and I see a team, but I was never passionate about it. I was always passionate about things that helped myself to develop myself 
or to support others. But because what I learned in the early years was be less impressed and more involved. So mm-hmm. I always try to, I'm, I'm passionate for something where I am involved and I can contribute to make this, 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 this world a better place and mm-hmm. what, 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 Whatever it is, whatever whatever yeah. service I can offer to others, that is helpful. Well, let me tell you a little story that happened to me a little over ten years ago. Uh, my wife and I were in a local MLM uh, group selling product, and one weekend they had a couple guys come in and spend the weekend talking about self improvement, motivation, self esteem, something that I had never experienced in my life because everything that I had ever been told had always been in the company that I was with. It was to have become a better supervisor, better manager, better budget, or whatever it was. It was always for the benefit of the company, not for the benefit of the individual. Now, there may have been some residual stuff, but I started doing things, and I went to a convention up in Dallas about three months later because that was one of those big, you know, here's everybody in that particular field of self-improvement, motivation. Anyway, uh, I started, I bought a bunch of books, and for the next three and a half years, I read more than a book a week. For that period of time, I didn't stop because it was an area that I had no exposure to that all of a sudden, whoa, this, I didn't know this you know, existed and I was able to I actually get in that field. I wrote a couple books. I was speaking on the topics. I was selling my stuff at the back of the room. But it was one of those things that I had no idea that field was even open. I had no idea who these people were. Yeah, I sort of heard some names, something, but they didn't mean anything. But I think there's just so many things out there. We just don't have an appreciate kind of knowledge of awareness. And certainly not an education, but sometimes it reaches out and grabs a hold of you and won't let go. And, and if you accept it, then it becomes a passion. Well, that's the thing is, is, is those opportunities appear in your lifeline is whether you take that opportunity to invest the time into finding out a little bit more. You know, I, I, the same as you when, when my mother passed away, which will be 20 years in July. You know, I went on a journey and I was brought up Catholic and then my, at 16, my mother was like, it's up to you whether you want to follow religion or not, because I come from an Irish, Scottish, Jamaican, Nigerian background. So they're all faith believed. And I was like, well, listen, the strongest, most powerful person in my life has just take, take, been taken away from me. So who the fuck is in charge of this world? So I went to Christian church. I went to Catholic church. I went to spiritual churches. I went to Muslim churches. I went to every different denomination. And one thing I found in common, they all pretty much preach the same thing, which is the seven pillars. If you do seven good things, then life is going to be amazing. But the spiritualist church, I was sat down and somebody just said and pointed out and said something to me. And I was like, oh, my God, is this real? And then I went on a journey, a spiritual journey, and I'm still on that journey. And whatever journey you start, if you carry it on, if you'll never finish it. You might have started something, Red, when you're, in your like 18, 19, a book that you got halfway through. And it didn't really grab you. And then you see as you're clearing out and you think, you know, what? I'll just give that another go. And you're like, ah, now I'm ready for that. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah I've been told you it's like seven to 12 times. You got to see something or hear something in order to fully understand it. And, and that's been, been true so many times. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I know exactly. I can tell you what you said, but I didn't understand fully what, what the whole thing was until you weren't listening. Oh, you were just giving it lip well, service. Yeah. Well, I was giving it more than that, but I didn't understand the basics. I, I understood the words, but I didn't understand the concept well enough to say, this is really what's going on. And yeah, I understand. Yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, and I, I'll try to, do, but it didn't. And then all of a sudden, boom, the light came on and my goodness that, yeah, that that's correct. Well, whilst I was in hospital, you know, they were throwing all these different names, you know, PET scan, CAT scan, ultrasound and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, while I was there, I was asking him, well, how long are you doing this? What does it do? But literally, as soon as I was back up on the ward, I was YouTubing. Right. What has just happened to me? Do you know what I mean? And then I sit there and I go, how the has somebody created this thing that weighs four tons is a million pound? Do you know what I mean? That vibrates magnets at such a speed that they have to cool it down to minus 296 degrees so to save them some money do you know what they should do doug send the bloody things over to you <laughs> yeah but yeah i was invested in <laughs> of the machines you know and it's fascinating that somebody's idea somebody's concept they were passionate enough about it to put it in production you know how many times was tesla told how many times was dyson told you'll never make it, you'll never make it, you'll never make it. But they were passionate enough and stubborn enough to say, do you know what? 
bugger you, join me on my train ride or jump off at any stop that you want. And I, that's what where I am at the moment. I'm full steam ahead. And the people along the way that have said they've wanted to help me on that journey, I'm opening the doors now. If you want to get on that journey, fine. If not, I'm not carrying no dead weight. You know, I need people to help me move forward at a faster pace than I was letting it go before because I was steering every department. Whereas now I'm finding the people that are as passionate as me and the first words out of their mouth is not how much money am I getting, is how can I help you impact what no. you're doing? Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Ch gentlemen, big... Go ahead, Roland. Ch gentlemen, I have, have a question to you guys. Uh, have you always been, had you always been a, a passion about something when you were young? When yes, did you, have you been supported by, the, by your family, your parents and teacher? If not, how did you find a passion? Well, I think uh, Big Sky just kind of hit it right there because you bump into enough people and you develop just a little bit of interest and then somebody else comes into your gang of whatever and then they learn a little bit more and it just sort of develops. And sometimes that development can be literally overnight uh, or it can be so over three or four burner. months or over a year. Yeah. But it sort of depends on who you associate with and how well they define that passion for you as you ask questions and begin yeah. to understand. It. I think he was a very good point about that. And you can't control the pace of that. Do you know what I mean? It's like people that I worked in on the circuit, on the festival scene. It's like, do you know what? We need to meet up and have a coffee when we're not working on the stage and stuff. And literally 10 years it's taken people now to come around my house and have a cup of tea. But I tell you what, that has been, I think, throughout all of this journey, I've had so much love online. Don't get me wrong, people praying for me. Today, I went into a, a, a shop where I bought my daughter a, um, some crystals when she was into it last year. And the woman said, oh, I remember you. What are you in for today? I says, well, my daughter's given me a wristband on my left wrist. I've got a good luck thing coming from Canada for my right wrist. A friend's given me something on my neck, but I want something for me that I can invest my spirituality before I go under the knife. And she was looking at all these stuff and she just pulled off this teardrop and she went, oh, they, there's two of them, two stalls across from each other and they couldn't work out what the stone was. And I says, do you know what? I like it, it's weird, it's unique and whatever. I said, how much is it? She went, this is from me to you. Nice. nice. On your journey. Wow. So it's like, <laughs> it's just, when you're passionate, it comes back a hundredfold. You know, don't be scared, just do it. And if you can't go to sleep, if you're in the insomniac, get the shit out of your head that's doing keeping you awake onto a piece of paper and then start ticking it off. You know, don't waste that time in idle thoughts. You know, an idle mind is a devil's best friend, you know. So, you know, you know, you know what's called when, when I got a passion for something new, I, I couldn't sleep for days like I had a brain damage. I was like, standing up making yes, notes. Like drug. Yeah. 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 I was getting up the notes and yeah. I, I left I left this at the dormitory. I went out to my home office writing down so when I was passionate, I can't sleep when I'm passionate. It's endorphins. You know, yeah. when you're passionate about something, it's the best drug in the world. It's endorphins. And Absolutely. if you can't sleep for three or four days, then that's saying to you, This is fucking right. Yeah, <laughs> you know gut instincts just yeah absolutely absolutely i guess I think, passion is most important yeah but i think um with the pandemic and everything i think it's made people wake up and realize what their true worth is to the the mainstream and the industry you know when, when the shit hits the fan who's going to get the handouts and who's not and i i hope a lot of people have woke up and gone hang on who am i what am i about what can i do you know and i think well, no. there's, a, there's a bigger psychological shift because people are like, what is my worth? What is my value? Well, I know Doug is a bit of an expert on grieving, and that's what he helps a lot of people get through. But how do you how do you find a passion, Doug, when you used to have something, and now all of a sudden some other event in your life has kind of blotted out or darkened everything around you? How how do you how do you get back to that some sense of even normalcy? Uh, what about I did a passion. Yeah, what I typically find is that the more people that I'm able to reach out and help, help them along their healing journey, that that makes me feel good. And that's part of my passion. And and the other part is I've got myself to a stage now where that's what fuels who I am as a person. That's the passion that every morning when I wake up, I ask myself, I wonder who I'm going to be able to reach out and touch today to be able to help them with their healing journey and be able to move forward. 
And by helping them, that becomes therapeutic for me. And, and that's how, you know, I'm able to, to some extent deal with, you know, with the loss of a loved one as well. Okay. So you're taking the, the, the experience you have and with empathy and consideration and, uh, and other things, and you're, you're helping somebody else to get over that little hump, big hump as the case may be in, in many cases, uh, in order to, for them to, to get some sense of being just normal, not even having a passion, but just get to normal where then they can start getting back into the, to whatever passions they might have. Yeah. And, and it's getting them to a place, a safe place where they feel comfortable or safe, even sharing what they're going through. And I, and I find by me sharing my story that helps them feel safe and therefore then they start to open up and like I worked with a young entrepreneur here just two, three days ago and same sort of thing was going through anxiety and all kinds of different things that, you know, some of it work related, some of it personal and it was to be able to to help that individual understand that it's it's okay to feel the way you are, and it's okay if you you know that it's, what I wanted them to feel comfortable was comfortable enough to be able to let's talk about how you're feeling and, and you know what were some of the root causes of where we are today and deal with it that way and that made a big difference. Absolutely. I think it's what you said, Doug, it's also important that people find a passion because, you know, especially when you when you go through struggling, challenging times, when you have a trauma, when you lose somebody, uh, whatever happened, I mean, a passion brings you back to life. It brings you back to participate actively in life. And that's, I think that's just important. And what you said at the beginning, it's all about opening up, building up the trust with your own story. And then understanding it's okay how it is. It's okay to suffer. It's okay. But and take your time, whatever time you need, but then participate in life and find something that you're passionate about it that brings you back on on the on track on on on, on life. Absolutely. Yeah. Well life's about well, and you spent it. Many, so. Yeah, Roland, you spent many years in Mallorca. Uh, I'm guessing you've always had a passion for travel. Now all of a sudden you're being able to do it on your schedule, your dime, your time. Uh you was that passion for travel just put on hold for a long time? Well, the point is, uh, <laughs> uh, I had, I had, uh, you know, I, I raised up in in a, in in a, in a in a low middle class family, very low middle. My my father purchased the first car. I was seven or eight years old, so we didn't travel. And I had the chance when I was six years old with a neighbor. She went with her a grandson to, to Italy, to the beach, and I could go with them for, I don't remember, a week or two. And I came back, and I, I, I'll never forget this. I, I've come back, I was so flashed when I saw the sea. I was so flashed, and I was so excited, and I told my dad, well, I'm so happy, and, and this is my dream to move to the seaside. And you know what? My dad pushed me down. He said, everyone else, but not you. He pushed me down. He pushed me down. But, you know, secretly, I was always drawing uh sea animals i was always throwing uh, sailing boats or something the never the passion never went gone have been gone away but it was suppressed by my dad and when i did I started my own life when i became a student at university i always on vacation always at the seaside and when i was financially independent i moved to the seaside finally so it never it never went away even with the suppression from my dad and bringing me down so because they, it was they, a passion it was a passion, it was really was passion. Just, yeah yeah not exactly. a nice to have it would be lovely no no it was a passion to live on the seaside and and, and, and i still live this passion on, on traveling absolutely Absolutely. And you probably find that your dad was jealous. You know, it's like um well, my my father. Dad was traveling like crazy, you know, he was traveling all the time, but he didn't never bring the family with him. No, no. <laughs> Whereas you just had that freedom, you know, but that's yeah. why he was jealous the freedom of you. Yeah, you know? but this 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 passion always drove me. And, and to be honest, when I was um when I started my corporate work career and then building up my own business, really when I was down. And, and it didn't work and i was almost to give up and i said okay why i'm doing this for my passion one day i moved to the seaside then that that's drove me since since i'm six five and a half six years old mm -hmm. and still and it still does it still does yeah. that was your vocation do you know what i mean and you it just like most things you know what i mean we we know at a young age what we we've got an idea of what we want to be and then society and schooling and whatever tells you no 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 in order to be a human you've got to do this that and the other we all inherently 
have a skill to bring to the table. We're all a piece of a giant jigsaw puzzle and we just need to know what our passion is, what our skill is and where it fits within society. Do you know what I mean? And I think we all as a youngster, if it keeps coming up like radio and talking to people has come up in my life three or four times, even though I've had to venture away because doors weren't opening. So the final time I come back in, I was like, well, for God's sake, this is the third time it's come into my life. So obviously, whoever's controlling us, you're saying, Scotty, pull your fucking finger out. This is what right. you're supposed to be doing. But not for you. Teaching, sharing your skills to the world. You know, what I take for granted and do on a daily basis, and I've been doing just for fun to help people, I can actually now make an income from it. And in a way, I felt guilty about being paid for my passion. But isn't that the saying? If you get paid for what you love doing, you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> so it's a paradigm, you know. So you know, there's on the on the music end of things. Yeah, you know, sometimes that music is, is really upbeat, and we just kind of get into it. But sometimes the lyrics really mm -hmm. capture us more than anything else. Yeah. And, and I can remember some of the songs way back in the '60s when I was a teenager, and you know, there was Split just certain things that. Yep. Oh yeah, and but the thing is, it captured my mind of what I I wanted to experience. Out, I may not have been into drag racing or surfing or some of the other things, but it was still kind of neat to to be part of that genre. But then, yeah. when some of the other things, that, well, okay, fine, fine, you finally get to experience some of it, and you now you see some of what you heard and was ingrained here. Yeah. Now you're experiencing it, and that becomes even more inflaming of getting that passion up to a point where you can actually afford the time and, and luxury to go out and do it. Well, I've had songs, you know, that like you were saying, that, that I, I know the lyrics word for word, you know, and then there's others where I've just literally been dancing to the rhythm. And then for like 10, 15 years, then one day you actually sit and listen and you go, oh, uh, didn't realize they were singing <laughs> about that. Oh, uh. <laughs> And now with everything being woke and PC, it's like, should I really be dancing to this? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But, Scott, but Scott, you mentioned before, you know, you, music is your passion. And, and you, you said something that really uh, really uh, touched me because you said, it's it's for me music who follows me, who is on this train with me. It's okay, maybe they come on, on, on the later stage on the train, but I go my way, the, the, no matter what I'm thinking. And when I was thinking back, you know, when I got this early seed when I was oh, six years old, for, for my passion about living on the seaside, from this stage on, I was swimming against in a different direction. All my friends and families said, Roland is different. Roland is different because I, I didn't want to be a frozen mountain boy from Austria anymore. Yeah, I hated it. <laughs> it's a beautiful, uh, it's beautiful to see, but I hated the cold and it was always me. And I, I, I was always swimming against because I said, no, I don't want to stay in Austria. I have to do something different than my friends in school, than my family members. I, and, and something was a lot of resistance. But I, I I never ever gave up, and I, I think that's so important when you have a passion, go for it. And that's actually that's also I want to tell our audience when you have a passion, give a shit what other think about it. Yeah, most really? passionate Ooh, people really tend passionate. to that they they tend to call the black sheep. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They get out of the shit and actually live for themselves, and everybody else is talking about them. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Or is this like yeah? yeah. But you know what? Yeah. The day everybody says, "Yeah, Roland, uh, you made it. You 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 have a dream of life." Uh, what the fuck? Mate, I've yeah. made it. I, if I wake up another day, yeah, yeah, it was a hard way. Yeah. And I, actually, I, 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 two weeks ago, I quoted on, on the social media. I said, you know, some people uh, tell me that I'm crazy, but I'm not. I'm just like they are. They love to be, mm -hmm. if they wouldn't be yeah. so anxious. Yeah. What people well, throw at you is up, usually a reflection of themselves, anyway. Yeah. So. I hate to break up the party, but it's just about that time. About what time? <laughs> yeah, we, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Time we're to get ahead. funky. Oh, baby, coming to an end, we're no. coming to an end. Yeah, yeah well, we're, we're not at the end yet. We've still got a couple of minutes, so let's just utilize no. every single second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, no, have to, just, we have to do another show. It, Thanks, Red, for reminding us. But again, <laughs> when you have a passion about a topic, then you're exactly you know, you're yeah, it's hard to curb your passion. It is, absolutely, no doubt. So, gentlemen, thanks a lot. And to our audience, if you love the show and you missed one of the other ones, please go to bonfiretalks.com. You will find all the recordings. And you also can contact us. And please, if you have a topic that you want us to discuss here as a man, let us know. We're more than open. We're more than open. Whatever you want to discuss as a man, let us know. Let us know. Let nice us know. to meet you, Doug. 
Yep, nice well, to meet well, you as well. Nice again, Red. Ho I hope, 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 I hope we, we hope we see you again. We hope yeah. we see you again. So, gentlemen, have an amazing rest yes. of the day. Yes. Uh, Thanks for joining us. See us next week, same time, same station, here on USA Global TV and Radio, Wild at Heart, the show for men, by men, about men. Thanks. Real, and bye -bye. authentic, uncut. Bye, y'all. <laughs> bye. See you later.